Hello and welcome to ExtendingClouds.com. My name is Gary Coburn and I'm here as your host to introduce you to enabling the Event Broker Part 2, adding or updating properties. So one of the things that has uh, come to my attention, I did a great job with the first enabling the Event Broker and uh, said more Event Broker things would be coming and I went immediately into the more advanced using the event broker to do custom notifications or deploy an application or some of those different pieces. But one of the things I didn't spend any time actually focusing on was how in version seven with the event broker, we actually add or update properties to a particular blueprint that is uh, requested. So first and foremost, let me say, I highly recommend you take advantage of reading the first enabling the event broker there's some things in there that uh, I'll walk through here and we'll introduce you to but the idea is that it's already there uh, most of those will be something that you can reuse specifically when you start to take advantage of uh, some of this stuff so without further ado uh, I like to make it quick and simple so uh, a couple of things that I'll introduce you to first from a VRO or vRealize Orchestrator perspective that is embedded into the vRealize Automation 7 appliance. Uh, this is all 7.0.1, so should be uh, the latest and greatest for you to take advantage of. We've, uh, we've actually started to standardize within VMware on a couple of key components on who delivers what and how it actually gets delivered. So. Um, I've created a couple of things that you can use to jump off. I encourage you to copy these particular workflows and pull them out to uh, to your own environment and use them as you, uh, you see fit. But uh, from the custom workflow perspective that uh, exists out here today, we have our standard get properties from VRA. Again, this equates exactly to the extending clouds get uh, custom properties examples that were listed. So the idea here is, is that we're pulling in all of our custom properties, just like we did in version six and X and basically logging all of the different components. Next, we've also got our uh, convert to a virtual machine by UUID or name. Just so you know, this can be used for uh, for doing the conversion to the VC virtual machine. This is what you can uh, use if you want to execute something using the guest script manager or if you want to add or remove components from the virtual machine once it's been uh, provisioned with VRA. You, you are literally grabbing the machine name and the ID, passing it to this workflow which automatically exports out the virtual machine construct. So something easy if you wanted to build off of that as well. But today we're going to focus on our add or update properties. So again, part of the power of the event broker is that uh, we can execute things based on any of the given state changes. And here today we're going to basically at uh, at request time or uh, provision time or any of the different state changes that we want to take advantage of we're gonna pull in all the properties and then we're gonna say you know what we want to take that as an output create properties and pass it back into VRA saying we want to change the virtual machine network name for example to the DV port group and we want to create a new custom property and it's just a simple example. So again, this is not meant to, uh, to be something that is immediately valuable in your environment. Some of this is logic that you're going to want to take advantage of, but the value here is, is that it's much easier to pass properties back between VRA and VRO than it was in the past. So we'll do something simple like at, request time we're going to go ahead and say we uh, or or actually we'll probably do it at building machine time we're going to tell it we actually want the db port group to be something very specific and we're going to add an additional property to that 
particular request so that uh, that blueprint gets something additional. Now we'll jump right in and create a couple of subscriptions. Um, we'll actually uh, take our trigger. So all of the events, this is an example of the custom property. We will assign it the example of getting properties. So this is just going to pass the payload and give us a system log of all of the properties. We don't need this to be blocking and we're just going to trigger it on every event. Now for an example here we're going to go and add an additional lifecycle event and we'll just run it at the lifecycle state, oops, all of the following. We will run it at the state change that is VMPS. Oops. Uh, let's do building machine. We'll add a clause saying we only only want it to run at post building machine state, for example. We'll give it our add or update properties. Oops. We have to make this a blocking task because the requirement is that it stops it in order to report it back. We'll go ahead and leave the priority what it is and we'll give it a timeout of five minutes. We don't need that much. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Now you'll see add or update. We'll go ahead and publish that. We'll make sure our triggered on all events is published. We'll also make sure the rest of these are unpublished. As we need them. Now, one important notification for you or, or note for you to have is at the state changes, I already have these six state changes defined. So this means that at each and every one of these that I execute, I'm passing it all of the parameters for that particular request. So when the request comes across at each, each of these different states, you're going to go ahead and get a value of every custom property that's in there. Again, this is back to the power. Take a look at the enabling the event broker that we did previously. So with that, we'll go in and request our CentOS machine as the example. We'll go ahead and submit that. We can look at the requests. As they uh, start, we're in progress. We'll jump back to VRO. and we will watch the process run. So first you'll notice that we'll run the get properties from VRA over and over and over again, basically at every event we should see that trigger. And then when the building machine post runs, we'll illustrate the fact that the add or update properties from VRA actually triggers and will add and update very specific properties. So 
So just as, as the example, we can go ahead and look and the virtual machine network name is VM network, for example. And we do not have a custom example property in here anywhere. Now you'll notice that the add or update properties has run. Updating or adding specific custom properties. If you go through and look, we now have a custom example property that did not exist. We also have a network name change to DV port group. So that's how easy it is in version 7 with the event broker to trigger an add or update of a custom property that exists in your environment.